first reading from the prophet Daniel, it's a strange one certainly um, for us who listen to it. It's been over the years a, a great source for um, fiery evangelical preachers um, to give strong messages to people. It's apocryphal literature, much like the apocalypse in the New Testament. And it was written in these strange ways because they were trying to, um, the author was trying to protect the, the people of God. Um, he was writing about what was happening in the society, but it had to be very secret or secretly displayed. And so we have here, um, this happened in the time of Daniel. And we have to remember that it was meant for the people of that time, but has a message for us. The four, um, the four beasts were the Babylonians, the Medes, the Persians, and the Greeks who overcame and conquered the kingdom of Judah. The ten beasts and their wild heads and so forth were the ten kings who lived in that time. And each one of them brought different destruction to Judah. The small horn on the one's head was Antiochus. Antiochus was the final king uh, um, at that time. And these were dreams that were interpreted by Daniel. And so he, he's saying that these kingdoms will all be destroyed and one kingdom will reign. And when he talks about seeing one like the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, that's a reference to Jesus Christ, the Savior. He is the eternal king that will come and establish an eternal kingdom. You and I are fortunate because we are so well aware that that king has come. Um, and he has come in the person of Jesus Christ. And he's a king who doesn't just lord it over us, but loves us and protects us and rules us. And that's the good news of the, of the scriptures. And Jesus is, says in the, in the gospel too, there will be many signs happening where people think the end is here. But he's saying that all these things are going to pass away, but his words will never pass away. God's words are eternal. So you and I are very fortunate to know the outcome of all of these predictions of the Old Testament prophecies and the birth of Jesus Christ and his life, death, and resurrection. We live in the kingdom of God now through the liturgy of the church. We are so privileged to be touched by God in those sacraments. And they are so very important to us. I anointed a man who was suddenly dying at the hospital yesterday. And I thought, this is what the church is about. Each person is so important to Christ. And that man was receiving the sacrament of penance and the sacrament of anointing of the sick and the final blessings of the church. He was beginning, getting ready to enter into God's kingdom in heaven. And that's the goal that we all have. And we can live with hope and trust because we know that that kingdom is there for us. So we're here this morning celebrating um, Jesus Christ in his sacred heart. God loves us with his whole heart. And with that confidence, we can go each day knowing that he walks with us and he is with us. And we should not live in fear, but in hope that his kingdom will finally conquer all things. When the end of time, end of history comes, the Lord will come and bring all of this together into his one eternal kingdom. So we thank God for the revelation of his son and the gift of his son to us today and ask him to help us with his Holy Spirit to be faithful to his word. Let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions.